Good morning. Giving our praises to God, honor to Pastor Smith, and you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm here to bring you greetings on behalf of the Mount Horror Missionary Baptist Church, where we're located at 118 West Gray in historic Fourth Ward edition of Houston, Texas. Our motto here at Mount Horror, this is a church where you enter not as a stranger, but as a guest of God. And if you're in need of a church home, we would happy to have you as brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, you are welcome, welcome, welcome. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, all right. If you're able to stand, let's give God some worship this morning.
Young is on our way this morning. To root out, and to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build, and to plant. Amen. Please remain standing for the power of prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for blessing us and keeping us for another day, Lord. Lord, can you just shower me with divine love, Lord? Can you, Lord, can you just bless Pastor Smith and his family, Lord? And, Lord, can you just guide us and protect us with divine love? And, Lord, can you just bless us with another day? In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen.
in the place of sorrow. There was so much on my mind Searching for that peace But the peace I could not find So then I kneeled down to pray Pray, help me please But then he said, you don't have to cry Cause I'll supply all your needs Soon as I start worrying Worrying how the story ends I'll let go and I'll let God Let God have his way That's when, that's when things start happening When I stop looking I'll let go. I'll let go. And I'll let God. Let God have his way. 
There's so much going on Sometimes I can't find my way And oftentimes I struggle Struggle from day to day I have to realize that it's not my battle It's not my battle to fight I have to know if I put it in hands that everything will be alright. Soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends, when I let go and I let God, let God have it. That's when things start happening. place right there to hang a praise at. Oh, when I learn to let go and let God. Oh, that ought to be some witness in here this morning. To know that you tried all that you can try. You tried some of everything. You tried some of everybody. But oh, when you learn how just to let go and let God. Let Somebody ought to testify that I've tried it for myself. And I've come to a conclusion that can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, 
a simple principle that's hidden in scriptures. It says, render therefore unto Caesar the things that are which Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. Church, you got to know that God gives us nothing but everything that we have including life itself is on lend from God. God lends you your children. He lends you your help. He lends you that finance. He lends you that job. The only thing he says is render to Caesar's what Caesar's, but render to me unto me. Malachi says, bring ye the tithes and the offering. He say, bring it to the storehouse. And God concludes and say, prove me that I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings that you don't have room to receive. Gracious God, our Father God, how we love you. Master, how we thank you. Father, we thank you for this moment of offertory of worship, God. When we can so freely give back to you what you've asked us to do. Father, we ask that as we lift up our offerings today. God, we say thank you. And this is in our appreciation for what you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're viewing with us today by way of Facebook, by way of Zoom, by way of YouTube, certainly you could be a part of this offertory of worship period. We personally, we would love for you to come out and bring your offering, bring your tithes. But for some reason you could not make it. There's three ways that you can give. You can mail it in, you can cash app it in, or you can even go through PayPal. But certainly we want you to be blessed by God for your obedience. Amen.
don't you sing that chorus with me one more time? about us today we come seeking your divine guidance we come lifting up those that are on prayer lists everywhere they are Names with us, but they are persons with thee. And since you know all about us, and you know our every need, we come before your divine throne, begging you to have mercy. While mercy can be found, let healing take place where healing is needed. Let deliverance take place where deliverance where deliverance is needed. Whatever the need is. We heard you say through one of your servants who said to the church at Philippi, but my God shall supply all of I need according to his riches through his son Jesus. And so, Lord, we believe your every word. Pray that thou wouldest ride in your power today all over this land and country. Oh, God, we know that you know everything about humanity. We know, a Father, that you are the life giver. You are the soul reviver. We praise your holy and righteous name. Have thine own way. In the mighty name of Jesus. We know, we know, we know. All power belong unto thee. Have thine own way. Use the men of God everywhere as they stand to bring your word to your people. Oh, Lord. Right in your power today. Oh, Lord, have thine own way. We know you can. We believe you will. Have mercy right now. Oh, in hospital, my father, touch today. In nursing home, my father, touch today. In other institutions, my father, touch today, have thine own way. Oh, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh, right now, 
Jesus and heal in my heart. Oh, right now, send deliverance, my Lord. We know you can, we believe you will. Am thine on way. Oh, right now, ride in your power, my Lord. We know, we know, we know, we know. You are all power, my Lord. Have thine own way. Oh, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, somebody needs you, my Lord. You know what the needs are. Right in your power right now. Oh, right now. Oh, God, have mercy, my Father. Give a word to your people everywhere. And am thine own way. And no, right now. Thank you, Lord, uh, from the very depths of our heart. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, for waking us up this morning. Uh, thank you, Lord, uh, starting us on our way. Uh, oh, right now, uh, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Uh, 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 oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for touching. Thank you for healing. Thank you for delivering. Oh, thank you, Lord. And out of the depths of our heart, send a word today. When it's all yours to call, uh, I would have to answer. May we hear your voice say, uh, Servant, well done. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Thank you, singers. My singers, the last song, Jesus said, if you lean on me, I won't let you fall. If you lean on me. Now I wonder how many of us really believe that song. He won't let you fall. Hallelujah. That word mean means lean means trust. I will trust in the Lord till I till I die. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Till I We're singing that, but how many of us really mean that? I will trust in the Lord. Oh, I will trust in the Lord. Oh, I will 
trust in the Lord till I, you know, let me say this. I went by the hospital yesterday to see one of my members, Sister Ann Wallace. She called me and said, Pastor, they're getting ready to discharge me. That's a blessing. When you trust in the Lord, when you know what he can do, and he can do anything but fail, doesn't matter what doctors say, because he has the last word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No one the you God bless you God bless you early this morning we were awakened and directed to pick up the Bible and so we did Now I want to ask you to stand now wherever you are stand. And if you have a Bible, open your Bible to the gospel of Jesus Christ recorded by the beloved disciple John. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. I heard one amen, that means I, I have it. And we want to start reading from verse number 35, John chapter 7. We're going to start reading from verse... I said 35, let's start at verse 33, amen. John 7, 
33. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this that he said, ye shall seek me and shall not find me and where I am thither, you cannot come. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit, are y'all listening? Which they that believe on him should receive from the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. You, you, you may be seated. This is an odd reading, but it is directed to listeners everywhere, especially to those of you who are assembled here at the Mount Hall Church. And, and, and what we want to preach about today my subject is when you are filled. Now, re repeat that. Come, come on, repeat it again. Amen. When you are filled. Now, what, what will happen when you are filled. Verse 38, I want you to listen. He that believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. Now, that's an odd passage of scripture, but the Holy Spirit gave it to me to give to you. And one other scripture that we want to look at, and it's, 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 it's in the same book, St. John chapter 4. 
I want you to just follow me today. And St. John chapter 4, verse number 14. St. John, John chapter, chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. Uh, but whosoever, are y'all listening? Drink it of this, of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Are y'all listening and I want to read verse 15 and then go back to my subject matter verse 15 say the woman said unto him sir give me this water that I thirst not neither come hither to draw uh, misunderstanding of what the water is. But I want to go back to my subject matter. When you are filled. Are y'all listening? When you are filled. And Jesus came to planet Earth that we might be filled. And every believer, thank you, Lord, every believer should be a filled believer. Because you cannot really and truly carry out the will of God until you feel. And every believer, every believer, uh, my question is to those that listen on the media, to those that are present in the house. My question is, do you want to be filled? Now, if you will look at the verse again, hallelujah. And that, that verse gives a explanation of what Jesus was talking about. I, I turned away from it. I got to turn back to it. And listen to what he's talking about. The de definition is given in verse 39. Are y'all listening? But this spake he of the Spirit, 
which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not glorified. And I'm going to explain that glorification uh, possibly somewhere in my message. And uh, let me explain the glorification now uh, because the Bible say he was not yet glorified. Amen. And when we look at a group of Greeks came uh, and said to Philip, Sirs, we would see Jesus. And Andrew brought those Greeks to Jesus and said to Jesus, they, they want to see you. And Jesus respond, uh, uh, y'all are Bible readers, his response was, now shall the Son of God be glorified. And what was the glorification? The glorification was his dying on the cross. And his death on the cross signifies that redemption was paid in full. And the redemptive, redemptive price was his shedded blood. And his shedded blood was the atonement for the sin of man. And that atonement actually meant forgiveness. And when Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood, are y'all listening to me? And shed his blood, his blood was the redemptive power of all men. And if we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, amen, accepting Jesus as Savior and Lord has a twofold meaning. Not only do you accept him as Savior and Lord, but you also become acceptable for the reception of the Holy Spirit. Why, Brother Preacher? Well, I'm glad you want to know. When God first made us, in Genesis 2 and 7, and breathe into our nostrils. Are y'all listening? The breath of life, which is the Holy Spirit. And man became a living soul. In other words, man had eternal life within himself. But you know, because of the trickery of Satan, man lost what God put in him, the breath of life, eternal existence. And man had to be redeemed or brought back from death to eternal life. And that bringing us back was through one media, and that media was the Son of God, 
God, help me out if you will. God made a promise. And the promise that he made, are y'all following me? The promise that he made was in the book of Genesis 3.15. Genesis 3.15. I want you to look at that. Some of you already know what it's saying. But Genesis 3.15. God speaks to Satan and says to Satan, I will put enmity between your seed and the seed of a woman. The seed of a woman shall bruise your head. Your seed shall bruise his heel. The, the significance of that really, really means that I'm going to send somebody that will take back from you the power that you took from man. When man listened to the voice of Satan, y'all got to follow me. When man listened to the voice of Satan, he lost it. In other words, what did he lose, Brother Preacher? I'm glad you want to know. When you look at Genesis 2 and 17, God said to the first man of every tree, Thou may freely eat, but of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, because the day you eat from that tree, thou shalt surely die. The death really meant that the Spirit of God, that is life, in man would, would, would be retrieved. In other words, I made man, or oh, y'all going to walk with me, I made man a trichotomous being. I gave man body, soul, and spirit. But when he listened to the voice of Satan, he was changed from a trichotomous being to a dichotomous being. He lost one component of his existence. Instead of him being body, soul, and spirit, when he listened to the voice of Satan, he became a dichotomous being, body and soul. The Spirit of God withdrew himself from him. And so man was walking around, DOA. Y'all know what that means, don't you? Dead on arrival. Because sin messed us up. But oh, thanks be to God. I'm cut, cutting across a whole lot of scripture now. Thanks be to God. God sent forth his only son that we might be filled again. When Adam listened to the voice of Satan, it emptied us. According to what Paul writes, thank you, Lord. In Romans chapter 5, verse number 12, by one man disobedience, we were all made sinners. But then he goes on to say, by one man's obedience, the one man's disobedience came through Adam. But all oh, thanks be to God, the one man's obedience came through Jesus Christ.
you, you, you know, permit me to say this. Satan doesn't want this message to be preached today because Satan wants man to be unfilled, man to walk around on planet earth spiritless. Jesus said, help me if you will, in St. John 3, he said, as he spoke to Nicodemus, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. In other words, you must be refilled. You must receive what you lost. And listen to what he says in St. John chapter 10. Thank you, Lord. St. John chapter 10, verse 10a. He says, the thief come, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the be part of that say, but I've come. Hallelujah. That you might, hallelujah have life and have it more abundantly. Now you don't have life until you feel. Hallelujah. Bring the feeling. I, I thank you Lord. When you look at Acts chapter 1 Verse number eight. And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. What is the reception of, the, of that power all about? And ye shall be my witnesses. In other words, if you feel you're not fearless. Take a happy seat. Hallelujah. When you are born again, you're not born again for you to go to church and sit down on your do nothing. The Lord fear you to be a witness. Going back to Acts chapter 1. And ye shall be witnesses of, unto me in, in Jerusalem, in Samaria, and in the utmost parts of the world. And the feeling is for a purpose or for a reason. Now, I shared with you uh, St. John uh, chapter 7 and St. John chapter 4. And, and the reason why I shared it with you is because now I'm going I'm to deal with St. John 4. That, that woman, that woman that was at the well, are y'all walking with me? When she heard Jesus say, uh, you, the water you, you joy, you're going to have to come back tomorrow and draw another bucket full. But I'm going to give some water. Hallelujah. That will be springing up to everlasting life. And that woman said to Jesus, Lord, give me this water that I won't have to come back to the well and draw no more. Did he give her that water? I'm glad you want to know. Because when he gave her the water, she left her water book, left her pot, and went on back to Sychar 
and, and, and became a witness all through the city. She said to them, come see a man that have told me all that I've done. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, whether you know it or not, Jesus gave her a drink. Hallelujah. He didn't give her water from the well, but he gave her living water. Are y'all walking with me? And that living water was the Holy Spirit. I said to you, and my very offset, that when God made us, he made us a trichotomous being, gave us body, soul, and spirit. But when Satan tricked us, he robbed us of a, one of the components, that component that keep you even after your, your physical life is gone, I heard the Apostle John write in the book of Revelation. I have I had some prayers here. Revelations 14, 13. He said, and I heard a voice from heaven said, write, blessed are the dead, not just the dead dead, but the dead who died in the Lord. What, what do you mean, John, dying in the Lord? You see, when you accept Jesus as Savior and Lord, you die. But oh, you become alive in him. Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord. From henceforth, yea, say the Spirit, they shall rest from their labor, which really means that they, they didn't die. They just went to sleep. When you accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, amen, death no more has a dominion over you. Why? Going back to the voice, the scripture that I quoted to you a few moments ago, when the Greeks came and said, uh, we want to see Jesus, and Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified. He was talking about his going to Calvary. He was talking about his dying. And because what they, the request they made was not to see Jesus the man, but see Jesus the Savior. They, they, they didn't, they didn't want to just see Jesus in the, in the body form. They wanted to see Jesus in the spiritual realm. They wanted to see Jesus more than just observing him. They wanted Jesus in their lives. I wish to have some prayers in here. Amen. You are dead until you accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And once you accept him as Savior and Lord, you become alive. And, 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 and once you accept him as Savior and Lord, amen, you accept that third component that you left, lost rather, and that third component is the Holy Spirit. And listen to what Jesus said to Nicodemus. I'm closing my little dissertation. Amen. Nicodemus say, amen. How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter into his second, in, into his mother's womb and be born the second time? Jesus say, I'm not talking about a natural birth. I'm talking about a spiritual birth. You lost it in Adam, but oh, I come to Fix it so you can have it again, and you must be born of the water and born of the spirit. Amen. I, I want to say to you, amen, if you're not born of the spirit, Satan can use you when he wants to and, and, and misuse you when he pleases. But oh, my brothers and sisters, if you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, you have somebody that will keep you, that will, amen, listen to what. Jude say in Jude 24 now under him who's able to keep you from falling and present you 
your faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. I want to say to you today, amen, whenever you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you got somebody that will tell you whenever the devil try to mess you up, that will tell you, you don't have to listen to that voice. You can listen to me and walk right and live right and do right. I don't know about you, but uh, hallelujah, I hear Jesus saying in my clothes in the scripture you heard him say and, 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 and whoever received this water shall never thirst but will be will going on to everlasting life. I wonder how many of those of you that are listening to what I'm saying have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Eh? Amen. You don't have to worry about Satan messing you up because you got somebody, amen, that will whisper in your ear whenever Satan try to mess you up. You don't have to go that way. Just listen to me and walk the way I want you to walk. Live the way I want you to live. I'm going to read that scripture. And then I'm going to take my seat. You heard it. He said, he that believe it on me. Are y'all listening? As the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, I'm going to close. But all that you've heard me say today flowing out of my belly living water. If you listen and receive it, you see, Satan has some ear stoppers. You know, like we walk around with them things in our ears. I, I, I don't mean no harm, baby. Satan has some ear stoppers. He can sing a lullaby and put somebody to sleep while the, preach, the preacher's preaching. And then, ironically, when the preacher get through preaching, he wake you up. You, you can wake up now. But oh, my brothers and sisters, if you have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. And the Spirit is asking the question, have you been filled? Filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you. Glory to his name. I'm clothing. I'm clothing with a testimony. Are y'all listening? Yeah. And the testimony is sitting in the nightclub, 1953, on my way to hell. Lick a bottle on the table, but no God in my soul. And I heard a voice asking me the question, what do you have to show for your life? I pulled out a big roll and said, I got this and more where this come from. But the question that came from him after that response was, if you would die tonight, where would your soul spend eternity? 
You see, because Satan messed us up, you're not going to go to heaven anyhow. You're going to need your fare to heaven. And your fare to heaven is Jesus Christ. When you accept him as Savior and Lord, You die, but you come alive in the Lord. And if you're alive in him, you don't have to worry about death, hell, and destruction. And before I could really and truly entertain the response to that question, and what I was thinking was, if I die tonight, I'm going to bust the bottom out of hell. But the response came, you don't have to die and go to hell. You can accept me tonight and I'll preserve you for heaven. And I said to that voice, if you want to know good like me, then here I am. That voice said, I don't want you like you are. I want you like I can make you. And I came to Jesus just as I was, hell bound. But oh, that voice that spoke to me in the beer joint continued to talk to me. When I got to the, the camp, hallelujah. And one of my friends asked me for a cigarette. And I pulled the cigarettes out of my pocket, gave it to him. That boy said, you don't need those anymore. Give them away. I gave them away. That boy said, and I'm closing, you have a Bible in your foot locker. Get it and open it. And I got my Bible and opened it. And it fell open on Genesis 22. And I read where Abraham trusted God, believed God. God said to him, offer up your son, your only son. And Abraham didn't qu question God, but took Isaac and laid him on the altar and drew his knife back in. He heard a voice say, stay your hand. Look in the, in the bushes. And there was a ram. Yeah. Well, what are you saying, Brother Preacher? When my friends start walking away, that same boy say, call him back. Y'all don't hear me. Call him back. You got a whole carton of cigarettes in your foot like a give them to him. You're not going to need them no more. I gave him that pack, that carton of cigarettes. When I opened the Bible and I saw where Abraham offered up Isaac, I said then, if that man can have that much faith in you, so can I. And of my brothers and my sisters, ever since that day, whatever the boys tell me to do, I'm obeying. Because now, I used to shoot heroin, hear me, to get high, brother preacher. But I don't need heroin no more. I got a high. That's a, that's, a, that's a natural high, a high of the Holy Spirit. Anybody else been born again? Anybody else? Amen. When sadness try to come in, he makes you happy. He tells you, 
even if you're looking at some things that are not going right, you hear that voice say, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be all right. And I'm so glad he's able <laughs> to back up what he said. You must be filled. My question is, when you feel, don't sit down, go to work. God saved you to be the instrument of salvation to somebody else. Going back to John 4, that woman went to cycle and said, come see a man. And the whole town came to see Jesus. But listen to what they say. We are not following him because of what you say now but because what we have observed ourselves. And anybody know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? If you know him, are you sharing what you know to somebody else? You need to be filled in order to be a witness. Because you can't talk about the land that flows with milk and honey and you're not going there yourself. Yeah. You're talking about the land that flows with, flows with milk and honey because you're on your way. Tell somebody else. I said, a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's living. Whatever men may say, I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And every time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me along life's narrow way. Oh, he lives. Jesus lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. He lives, Jesus lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Hallelujah.